What's up, what's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? It's Friday. I hope you guys have had a good week. I know Frank Gore retired officially yesterday. I didn't get to go on YouTube yesterday. I was on Instagram. We talked about it, but it was a busy day. By the time I got home, I just didn't have time to get on YouTube, so I apologize. Um, you know, but here we are today. It's the day after Frank Gore. He officially retired, signed a one-day contract to end his career with the 49ers. He always says he would. He always said, you know, when I retire, I want to retire as a Niner. So they had a ceremony just like they did with Navarro Bowman a couple years ago. So cool, man. It was awesome. You know, all the, the front office was there with him. He got emotional in the video. Like, he almost cried. Or, or Yeah, he was, he was like, crying, tearing up. And, you know, he was just getting all this respect paid to him. It was awesome, man. Frank Gore, he thanks the fan base yesterday. It was such an emotional day. Uh, and, and we all love Frank Gore. He was probably one of the greatest players I've ever watched play this game. He's one of the greatest players just in general in the NFL over the last, de you know, two decades, man. It, it's crazy. He's one of my favorite players of all time. And, and the legacy he had was just crazy. Um, a lot of people debate whether he's going to be a Hall of Famer. First, first, first ballot, I, for one, think he should be. I know people say, oh, he only got those yards because he played so long. But this is the thing. Frank Gore played 16 seasons. He's the number three um uh, leader in rushing yards all time in the NFL. This man played the most games by any running back in the NFL. It's crazy the amount of stats he put up, and, and he did it consistently. He was a you know multi-time Pro Bowler. He was uh, eight years out of ten years with the Niners, a uh, thousand yard back. And the Niners, when he was on that team, were were not good. They were not a good team. You know they were very bad. Dark days. He was the heart and soul. You know you had Joe Staley, had Frank Gore, and Patrick Willis. Really, those were your your big time players on that team and you know they they kept playing 110 percent 200 percent and the amount of dedication they put into this uh team was just incredible it was amazing to see and and frank was just one of those guys that just kept giving it his all no matter how bad the team was they went through so much turmoil bad coaches a lot of turnover on the roster you know they they went through different offensive coordinators and he was a consistent and you know when they got good again when harbaugh came over you know it was it was one of those guys that you're like, I hope they wouldn't ring for him. Fortunately, he did it. But this man bled red and gold. He didn't want to leave the organization. But, you know, when everybody left, when Harbaugh left, business decision, he had to do what was best for him. And he still had a hell of a career after the Niners. 16 seasons, man. Running backs don't do that. You know, it's hard for a running back to sit there and play three seasons, four seasons, five, 16, man. Not a lot of people are built like Frank Gore. And the crazy thing about it was Frank Gore, Frank Gore, Tore two ACLs in, in college, and everybody wrote him off. They called him a bust and all this stuff. And, you know, yesterday in his speech, um, and when he was talking, one of the things he said was, you know, I wanted to prove myself wrong to the doubt, prove myself to the doubters. And he says, you know, I'm so glad the 49ers took a chance on me and gave me the opportunity, right? Like, this was the only team that would give him the opportunity. When the Niners drafted him, I remember everybody was like, what a dumb pick. Why are they drafting him? That was a waste of a pick. He's a bust. He's injury prone. Everybody kept calling him injury prone. 16 seasons later, man, he shed that label. And he was, like I said, one of the most consistent players just in the NFL. Even when he left the Niners, he still put up big, you know, pretty solid stats. You know, he wasn't a running back one or, you know, a thousand yard back, but he was still the leading rusher in most of the teams he played for. And a great veteran. He taught so much to so many players along the way. Um, a a great player unbelievable i've had him live with me several times just a great guy man and one of the things he says when he retired when he uh, uh you know when it's all said and done he wants to come back to the team to the organization and either coach or do some scouting he says he really wants to do some scouting i remember i had him on a live back before the super bowl and we asked him we said hey do you want to come back to the niners he said the only way i'd come back is if harbaugh's coming to the team so we could kind of tell he was pretty much retiring he said he wants to focus on boxing for a little bit, and he would love to be in that front office as a scout. So I think one day Frank Gore will, but man, oh man, I wish we would have got that guy a ring. But it was amazing to see this guy retire as a Niner, and, and they did a great ceremony. Um, such an amazing player, and I got so much respect for the guy, and he hangs it up, and now he's uh, awaiting for a couple years till he gets uh, called to the Hall of Fame. 2026, he's eligible Again, I hope he is uh, a first ballot. These voters are crazy. They probably won't because, you know, he only put those numbers up because he played for so long. But that's crazy for a running back 
to play the amount of years that he did. It's it's incredible. To me, that just blows my mind. Most running backs, they flame out after a couple years. Look at uh, CMC. Look at Christian McCaffrey. If Frank Gore missed 15 games in 16 years. That's probably less games than Christian McCaffrey's missed in his whole career. Like, that's, that's mind-boggling to me. Mind-boggling to me. It's absolutely incredible. Frank Gore is a legend. And this man was just a guy that battled adversity no matter what. No matter what he did, no matter, you know, he would always go out there and just put in the work. And he got the results. I love the guy. I could sit here and talk about Frank Gore all day. What's up, everybody? Let's see what you guys have. Uh, if you have any questions here, let's see. Steven Reynolds, do you think Frank Gore can be the new front office with Jed York? I think that's what his goal is. He always says that he wants to be in the front office of the 49ers. And I think eventually he will be. I think give him a year away from the game. He'll get a little itchy. And I think he'll come back. And he will be a uh, part of this front office. I really do think that he's going to be part of this front office. So we shall see what happens with Frank Gore in the future. But he said, you know, yesterday he sat there. If you watch the videos and everything, he even said, he goes, it's crazy that you guys gave me this opportunity um, that nobody else did. So you could tell he was an emotional uh, player yesterday, emotional person as he should be. You know, he had his family there and he walked on the field and it's just a great feeling. But I do think that he will be in the front office for the 49ers. What a great player. What a great person. Again, I've had the pleasure of talking to him on live DMs. I've met him at a signing event. Such a good guy. Such a class act. Very nice individual. Frank Gore deserves all the love and respect he got yesterday on his big retirement day. June 2nd will always be known as Frank Gore Day. Forever. Forever, ever. Forever, ever. He will always have the, the day uh, to honor his legacy in the Niner empire, right? The Niners, we're always going to remember him. I know any anytime it's June 2nd, um, I'm going to have to honor that guy every day. I'll post about him. So I will always, always, always pay my respect to Frank Gore. Also want to touch on another retirement yesterday. Crazy. Alex Mack retired. Um, you know, it kind of was a shocker to some. It was one of those things that we were questioning was he going to retire was he not going to retire we didn't know and you know finally we got our answer in the morning yesterday it was reported that he restructured his contract and most of the time after june 1st um you know you get these contract restructures for for older veterans it's happened before with weston richburg many other players and it's pretty much a sign that they're going to retire and during the morning everybody's speculating it's pretty much a done deal that he's going to retire a couple hours later boom the big announcement he announced his retirement, and today Alex Mack officially like put it out there. He, he tweeted and, and gave his thanks to all his teammates and coaches and all that stuff. But that's big for the 49ers that Alex Mack retired because this man was a stable center. He was a great center, a, a hell of a player. 13 years in the league, multiple Pro Bowls, you know, a very, very smart center, a stable anchor on this O-line, and that's the key, stability on the O-line. That was a tough loss. You know, we lost Lakin on the left side. Now we lose Alex Mack, two veteran, durable center uh, O-linemen on, uh, on the mix. So now these young guys have to step up. Who's going to be the center? But, you know, Alex Mack, I can't say enough. This guy's had a great career. Played for the Browns. He played for the Falcons. He played for the Niners one year. And it was a good year for us. And, again, having a center that can, you know, reliably get to the, the exchange of the ball with the quarterback – is critical for the offense. You know, when you have a young quarterback, you want to make sure that exchange goes well and there's no issues with the handoff. So definitely going to be something where, you know, we have to look into at camp. And I've been saying this all uh, off season that one of the biggest position battles is going to be the offensive line. Now we don't know who's going to be center. Are they going to go sign someone, a veteran? Everybody wants them to sign JC Treader. Um, they have Jake Brendel and they also have Dan Brunskill. Those two guys can play center. But we don't know who's going to take that role. You know, Jake Brendel probably is your your lead guy. Is Dan Brunskill right now is to, uh, having an injury. Uh, I think he has some knee issues. He's not playing right now at, at OTAs. And for a young quarterback, you want him to get that chemistry early. Um, you want him to kind of build that that confidence between each other, get that snap off, the handoff together. So Jake Brendel is kind of taking those reps. You got a guy like Nick Zakel that was drafted. Um, you do have Donovan West, the undrafted guy. How fast are they coming along? How fast are they developing? 
Um, those two guys are going to be critical in development. But I think Jake Brendel, you know, might have a leg up on them. Uh, we'll see because he's been with the team a little long. Of course, he's been with them longer. They're rookies. We'll see how it goes. And then the other question is, if Dan Brunskill is center, who plays right guard, right? Because we don't know who's going to play guard. I'm pretty sure Dan Brunskill, when he's healthy, will be your right guard. Otherwise, you got Jalen Moore, Colton McKivitz. You know, who's going to take that right guard spot? Probably makes more sense when Brunskill's healthy to put him at right guard. So then center is going to be most likely Brendel or one of those younger rookies. So it's tough. It's definitely a battle. The um, loss of Alex Mack definitely puts a big question mark at the offensive line for the 49ers. And the offensive line is pretty damn important. You need to be able to block for your quarterback, um, especially when you have a young quarterback. You need to give that guy pr uh, time in the pocket. You need to give him confidence. You need stability. You need stability. Uh, yeah, young hood, Jalen Moore. Is Jalen Moore going to be able to play that right guard spot? We don't know. A lot of questions. And we don't know how healthy Mike McGlinchey is going to be. You know, he looks good so far. He, all the reports say he's coming back 100%. But we don't know. Is Mike McGlinchey going to 100% be ready for the start of the season? Most likely. But how effective can he be after a big injury, a, a torn quad? So there's questions all along that right line, uh, that right side of the line plus center. So definitely going to be a uh, a position battle to watch out for all offseason. It, it's it's tough to see and tough to kind of know right now who's who's ahead of everybody. It's, it's, it's you know, uh, OTAs. It's still... Still early. Once they get to training camp, then it ramps up a little bit. Players play a little bit more, um, more real time action. You know, you get the pads on and things like that. And then preseason, you get a little bit more real right there. And then we can kind of see, okay, who's taking those reps, those first team reps? Who's kind of with the first team offense? And it kind of gets a little bit more realistic. So it's going to be a battle all off season. Center O line, that whole spot is the biggest question mark. But shout out to Alex Mack, a hell of a career. Guy was great, good for the locker room, a true leader. You know, you need guys like that. And it's tough to see a guy like that leave, but you respect it. Again, 13 seasons in the league, hell of a career. Um, definitely going to be a Hall of Famer in my book. He's eligible 2027. Um, good to see it. Good to see great players, you know, go out uh, on their own terms and, you know, have a reflection of their career and, and everybody honors them. It's great to see. I love to see that these players are getting honored. Frank Gore, again, I can sit here and talk about him all day. Alex Mack, hell of a career. Appreciate him for playing with the Niners for a year. It wasn't that long, but it was a good season, you know, for him. Let's take a look at some of these questions. Um, when is training camp? Training camp is usually end of July, early August. Uh, mandatory mini camp is June 13th through the 15th. And then after that, they got about a month and a half off till the end of July. So that's when we'll see training camp coming back. And around that time is probably when I think Debo gets signed. We talked about this the other night. Debo Samuel, uh, per John Lynch, he says he's not going anywhere. He says he'd be a fool to trade Debo Samuel. I'm pretty sure he's going to stick around this year. Hopefully they figure out that contract sooner rather than later. I think they will. The news has died down. There's not much drama. And I honestly think that they'll figure it out. By training camp. I, I think cooler heads will prevail. You know, the agent, they got their number. I think John Lynch knows he's got to make this happen. There, there's things that they had to take care of. You know, they. I think they knew Alex Mack was leaning towards retirement. They had to take care of that, restructure his deal, sign the rookies, and, and go from there. So we'll see. I, I hope Debo signs sooner rather than later. I hope he shows up to mandatory minicamp later this month. Pretty sure he will. I don't think he wants to get fined any money. Nobody wants to lose money. So we shall see. What happens with that? And speaking of those rookies, all of them signed their rookie contracts yesterday. All nine of them, they all signed. So everybody's locked and loaded on this roster. Um, it was crazy. They got, you know, a restructured deal with Alex Mack. They got $4 million in cap space. He retired. And immediately that day, they go and sign all their rookies. It was a, it was a great day um, for the Bay, you know. They, they took care of business. They, they did the rookies they needed to sign. You know, Alex Mack did his thing. And then they had the ceremony for a Frank Gore. So it was a, a busy day for the Niners yesterday. And I think overall they're in a good spot. The only question mark right now, the only question mark is when will Debo sign his extension. That literally is all that's left this offseason. That's it. That's it. And then if Jimmy comes back and he's looking healthy and a team gets desperate, maybe they trade him. But again, my prediction is Jimmy will be on this roster through the year, whether you like it or not. 
He's got one more year on the contract. They'll keep him. He'll be plan B. If there is an injury, they could throw Jimmy out there. And it is what it is. So, um, ch -ch 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 -ch. any questions? Didn't Frank just KO someone a month back? Yes, he did. He KO'd someone, knocked them out. He said, Mama said, knock you out. Boxing, he made his, like, pro boxing debut. And he knocked that boy out, man. On his birthday, Frank Gore's birthday, knocked someone out. So, I'm pretty sure he's going to focus on that little boxing action for a little bit. And then uh, go from there. Again, I give him about a year. And then he'll probably be back um, in the boxing, uh, in the in the 49ers front office somewhere. I'm pretty sure. I say in a year he'll be itching to be back in the football world. So, Young Hood says around July or August, like Warner and Kittle. That's what I expect about Debo. Kind of the same time frame. Pretty sure they'll sign him um, right before training, right before training camp in in, um, in in July. So we'll see. Will I be attending training camp? I'm going to try. My work's been absolutely hectic, crazy. I, I want to be there. I need to be there. So we'll see how that goes. Honestly, man, it's been so crazy at work. I don't know how I'm even running this page, YouTube, and, you know, all my other socials. But I'm, I'm putting in the work as much as I can. Work has been absolutely crazy. I want to be at training camp. I hope I can be at training camp. I was supposed to be at the Senior Bowl, but I couldn't because of work. So... Work is kind of getting in the way of my content, but I got to pay the bills. So until this becomes a way to pay the bills, I won't be able to do all those things. But we'll see. Any case, I know I had to keep it short today. That's about all I got left. I might be back a little later on Instagram Live, but that's the time I have right now. I got a couple things I got to tend to. So appreciate all the support. Um, we'll talk about some more stuff a little later when I'm live, probably on Instagram. I wanted to get on here and talk about Frank Gore and Alex Mack a little bit because I didn't get that much time yesterday. Like I said, I've just been so busy. But I appreciate the support. I uh, love you guys. Hope you had a good day, and I hope you have a good weekend. Take care of yourselves. And, uh, yeah, respect to Frank Gore, the GOAT. Alex Mack, hell of a career. My man Hendrick said, should J.C. Treader be an option at center? I have spoke on this. Uh, yesterday I did a little bit, and earlier today I did say, I think that's a guy that they should look for. Um, you know, they need a veteran, a stable presence on the O-line. Now, I get it. Brendel's there. Like I said, those are their options. Brendel, Donovan West, and, and Brunskill. But I think if they can get J.C. Treader, I think that would be a better option. He, he's a solid veteran. You know, he would be more stable. But if they get him, they have to get him sooner rather than later because you need to build that chemistry with Trey Lance. You can't just throw him in there. A center is a guy that you have to build that chemistry with your quarterback, you know, because that exchange is, is vital. If you can't get those exchanges down right, you're going to be fumbling the ball, bad snaps. They got to make a move sooner rather than later. That's why I don't. That's why I think they're going to be okay with Jake Brendel because I think they've been knowing they were going to lose Alex Mack for the most part. So I think because of that, they're okay with who they have. The Niners are always okay with who they have because they're confident that the players that they have, the, the coaches that they have can develop them and, and be what they need to be, you know? So we'll see. Again, I don't know if I'm sold on Jake Brendel, but I hope he can prove me wrong. So they definitely need veteran presence, though, on that line. I am worried at center. But again, I got to go. I will address this maybe a little later on another live. I appreciate those that tuned in for the short time I had today. I'll be back later. Appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your night.